Everything is, was always cooler if you were on fire. <laughs> and whatever you're doing, whatever stunt you're doing, if you're on fire, it's cooler. It's kind of like whatever stunt you're doing, like, it's funnier if you're naked. I'm Joy Bryant, and this is Across the Board. I'm on my way to meet Steve-O, and we're going to go skateboarding on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. We're gonna cruise around, you know, hopefully I don't bust my ass too much. We're gonna rip it up, we're gonna skate the Walk of Fame. What am I expecting? I'm expecting him to do some crazy things. <laughs> and I'm not gonna do those crazy things. <laughs> but I am expecting us to have a great time. I hear he's fun, he's smart, he's got a hot vegan body, and um, he's crazy. <laughs>
went, I just went into his bedroom and I stole the camera out of his closet. As soon as I took it, I opened it up and you know, got it working and I went out with my buddies and, and we filmed skateboarding in the streets of London. And I uh, came home and I plugged VCRs together, I figured it out and hit play on one. I mean, people don't even know what a VCR is the anymore. Same way. <laughs> But I hit play on one and record on the other, and I just recorded the bits where, where we made the tricks. And then, uh, you know, I edited it together, and then Dad came home, and I was like, hey, Dad, let me show you something. I put this this tape in, uh, in the VCR and, and played it, and it was this edited presentation of our skate. My dad was like, how did you do this? <laughs> I'm like, well, I stole your camera out of your closet. He's like, he was really happy with that, you know? Right. I really was putting my mind to it, you know, with skateboarding and, and with the video camera. That's that's really like the things when I was a kid, like meeting Motley Crue. There's like sex, drugs, and rock and roll, uh -huh. skateboarding, and the video camera, and like roll them all into one. And that's like what my life really became about, you know. Uh -huh. This love of skateboarding and videotaping everything, when did it become a profession? Well, when, uh, when I graduated from high school in London, I went straight to the University of Miami. Within two weeks of class starting, I was placed on final disciplinary probation because I was I got, like busted with all the kinds of marijuana and, and, uh, and alcohol and stuff. I was like, man, I knew I couldn't hold a job and I knew I couldn't get passing grades in school. And so I felt like I just didn't have the survival skills to make it in the world. So the only thing I was really passionate about was video, videoing, skateboarding and, and stunts and stuff. And so I just decided that's going to be my life. You know, I'm going to drop out of university and I'm going to make my life skateboarding. And stuff. But I wasn't that good at skateboarding, so I had to do like stunts and stuff. So, okay, so you're in college, you're, you know, you're drop out. You, drop, you drop out of college, um, you're gonna, you're a stuntman, you're gonna be a stuntman, you're, you're videotape, you record, you're filming, skateboarding, and you're doing crazy stunts, like what were some of the stunts that you were doing back then? The way it started, innocently enough, was just like, oh, I'm at an apartment building and everybody's partying, and so I'd just go up to the second floor balcony and jump off into the pool. Then, and then I started like like dousing myself with like flammable stuff and, and lighting myself on fire and flipping off three-story buildings and simultaneously blowing fire out of my mouth while I flip. Everything is, was always cooler if you were on fire. <laughs> and whatever you're doing, whatever stunt you're doing, if you're on fire, it's cooler. It's kind of like if you're, whatever stunt you're doing, like it's funnier if you're naked. Yeah, being naked, lighting myself on fire, and jumping off buildings was uh, my It's roots. a shallow pool. That was my roots as a stuntman. Yeah, that was, that was my specialty. The naked guy on fire jumping off a building. I was uh, couch surfing for three years. I mean, I was genuinely homeless. I, I, I reached out to my sister and, and uh, got back in school. I was actually doing well in school. Well, I came home one day and my sister um, had this note on the table and it said, Ringling Brothers Barn and Billy Clown College. And uh, she said, apparently, uh, if you can get in, it's free. And I was like, huh? <laughs> and I thought, well, holy crap. If I could graduate from Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Clown College, then like when I'm lighting myself on fire at backyard keg parties, people will look at me and think this is a true circus professional. He's you know? legit. Legit. It would legitimize like my, my effort. And I figured it would help get me to where I wanted to be, which was a stuntman. And uh, so, I, so I, um, I hitchhiked to Denver to audition for Clown College. And um, I got in there. They started doing these exercises. And they were, um, they were like, uh, OK, um, uh, there's an imaginary line down the middle of your body. Half of your body is a lazy cow like grazing in a field and the other half of your body is a wild baboon throwing a temper tantrum, you know? That's what we want to see. What? So go. <laughs> like, like, ah. you know, it's like, 
There's, there's like, there's like no way to do that, you know, really. But, but, but it wasn't about what, the, what it was clearly about. It was about weeding out the people who were inhibited. You know, they just wanted to see Buck Wild going for it. Wait, I want to do that. Can we do that? Yeah. Oh, do wait, know. so it's a baboon and a. <laughs> okay. Imaginary okay. line. Imaginary line down the middle. This half is a lazy cow, and this half is a wild baboon. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. I love clown exercises. It's, it's it's fun. So what happened after clown college after you graduated? Oh man. What's your clown degree? I was simultaneously like working as a clown like on cruise ships and in the circus. The whole time, I never used to put down my video camera, and I was always sending out my footage to to um, skateboard companies to be in skateboard videos. Uh -huh. That never stopped, and there was this one skateboard magazine called Big Brother. The, the guy in charge of those, of those uh, videos, he, he went to his friend Spike Jones, and he said, hey Spike, everybody loves our, our Big Brother videos, but nobody really cares about the skateboarding. He said, I think if we took out the skateboarding, what's left over would be a great TV show. And when he took out the skateboarding, you had me and Knoxville and, and Wee Man and, and Pawnee and everybody. We never thought that anything was gonna come, or at least I did. And, then I was in the circus and they said, hey, it's not a pilot anymore, we got ordered. So we're coming to Florida to come film you. I, I washed off my clown makeup that last day in the circus and um, like I got in the car, just make it out of the parking lot of the circus and my car breaks down. <laughs> so we push it off to the, to the side <laughs> of the road. And I'm thinking, oh man, they're gonna leave without me now. Like here's this great opportunity. I blew it. But, um, but they, they had my list of ideas, and one of them was swallow the goldfish and then puke it into a fishbowl. So we're on the side of the road, and the producers say, "Okay, you go off to the pet store, go get the goldfish." You there's, and there's this little like barbershop. They're like, "Okay, you go get go get a mullet haircut in the bar," and uh, and they came um, back with the goldfish, and, and and I swallowed it. It took like two minutes to puke it into this fishbowl. Have you done it before? No, not at all, That's never. I was sitting on that idea for a good two years, oh, too. Really? And, and then I did it that first time. I finally puked the, puked the fish into the bowl, and it comes out swimming, and I'm like, yes, this is great. I remember Johnny Knoxville came up to me, and he said, well, Mr. O, if you weren't already famous from the Big Brother videos, I'd say you're going to be famous now. Famous. <laughs> you know? Great ideas, you know, we're coming, you know? And um, they came, and... My last day working in the circus was my first day filming for Jackass. I want to ask you, what are like in terms of your sobriety, what are like the three best things about being sober? Not wanting to kill myself. My word meaning something. Most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I guess just being alive, you know? Because if I wasn't sober, I would not be alive. At a certain point, you either get better or you die. And uh, I was at that point. So. What was it like to be a role model to, to, to people who are like, well, you are. I mean, like the girl that was just outside. Uh -huh. I mean, she said because of, like you were an inspiration to her getting sober. You know, at first I, I wanted to like, be a role model, you know? I thought, oh, this is gonna be great. If I learn how to live clean and sober, then uh, I'll be doing the world a huge favor. You know, I was thinking the world's gonna owe me and I get all this recognition and... Righteousness. <laughs> um, but uh, that was kind of a shaking motivation, you know? Initially, when I decided to get sober, it was all about, I'm gonna be doing the world a huge favor. I'm gonna get all this recognition. Like, uh, the world's gonna owe me. And that gave me the... Uh, motivation to, to really do it. 
But then once I had got involved in the process, I, I really, uh, I had to, you know, part of the process, you know, was taking an honest look at myself and my actions and the reality of the type of person I had become. And when the fog cleared and I was confronted with that reality, I was so horrified that I, it wasn't really, I didn't care about really recognition anymore. I just, right. I just desperately didn't want to be that douchebag that I had turned into anymore. But yeah, I'm Nothing just, that way. you know, I, I'm just content to not want to kill myself and, and, uh, and, and be a reasonably happy person. How much of your career has been fueled by like liquid courage and how much of it is just, that's just who you are? I, how much of my, <laughs> my, my <laughs> incredible body of work was, was uh, <laughs> I'd say that the stuff that I'm, mo I'm most known for, for the most part, I wasn't terribly uh, under the influence when I was filming. Like, Jackass in general, I don't know, that's not true. I was pretty fucked up, man. <laughs> well, how about this? How about when you... When you I'll tell you what, the honest answer, for a lot of the like uh, more notable moments in my career, I was fucked up. <laughs> and uh, if I wasn't really fucked up, I was super hungover, or, you know, I don't know. Yeah, that definitely played a role in it. But I wouldn't say that I was able to do the more memorable stunts because I was drunk and high. I think the, the primary factor was just like the extent to which I'm an attention whore, you know? Like uh, sober or loaded, like I'm just, I've got an unreasonable hunger for attention. And uh, I think that's really the main, the main uh, key. It took me a while to find my voice in sobriety. Like I would say that uh, for that, um, the third movie we made, Jackass 3D, I was, uh, I, would, I don't think I had found my voice. And I was, like, if you look at the, in the scenes, like I'm kind of awkward like on there. I'm like, ah, you know, like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, and then when that movie came out, I went out on a stand-up comedy tour. And I think that kind of brought me out of my shell. And I think it's gotten me on a, a trajectory to have a, a career beyond Jackass. Right. So I'm so excited about the stand-up comedy and, and the uh, the killer karaoke show because um, what's that? It's people singing karaoke while horrible shit happens to them. You know, so they're like, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're trying to sing Leonard Skinner and they're getting electrocuted all the time. And they have to keep singing no matter what. You know, it's kind of douchey for me to say that I did a great job, but. No, it's not. I think I really did. How long have you been vegan? I've been vegan for over three years now. And, uh, and I love it. I love, love, love it. Was it for the health reasons? <laughs> Sorry, I like, I like the people who like represent me and who uh, like care about me. Pretty much like tell me like to shut up about like why I, I first like went down like the vegetarian path. But I really don't care, you know. Like it's true. I was I was doing like so much drugs that that I was hearing voices and like after I did something particularly mean, the voice said, you know, you're gonna have to answer for that. And I remember I watched this, this, this video clip saying like um, how uh, difficult it is for Westerners to be saved because they just don't have any respect for life and for the planet. And then this guy says, how can you expect to be saved if you eat meat? And then I put that together with what the voices are telling me about how I'm gonna have to answer for like causing suffering. And then I'm like, all of a sudden it became terrified. I was like, oh no, like I've gotta, like stop eating meat, you know, or I'm gonna be punished for like every animal. Of course, I didn't think I had to stop like doing coke or, you know. Like, I had to stop eating meat was the priority. But of course, less than a month later, 
I mean, I did. I, I quit eating meat, and then less than a month later, I had uh, you know my intervention. I went to rehab, and then in sobriety, like it was it wasn't about fear anymore. It was just about like I felt rewarded, and by going out of my way to actually care about being compassionate for animals and for other people, what I'm doing is I'm rearranging the way that I feel about myself. So that's why I do it today. You know, I, I started out I was afraid of being punished, and then what it turned into is just this rewarding benefit of like caring about others making me feel better about myself and and way later in the game I found out it's actually the healthiest thing for me so <laughs> it's just one stop shopping <laughs> What's your tombstone going to say? My tombstone uh, here lays a guy <laughs> who did a lot of dumb things and learned a little. <laughs> <laughs>I mean, all of my tattoos are really designed to, to be silly and make people laugh. It's a, a naked guy wearing nothing but a belt behind bars, and it says prison love. This one is uh, my newest one. It's uh, Santa Claus on the Cross. The fact that I've like created a situation in my life where my knuckles say sh <laughs> all day, every day, and like it doesn't like hold me back. Like I gotta say, I'm super proud of that. You know. Hey, I'm Joy Bryant, and this is Eric Christensen. We're hanging out on the set of my new show across the board, discussing our new paddle boarding rivalry. If you want to check out and see how the race went, then you want to check out across the board, only on YouTube. Are you serious? I'm sitting here with David Sally and Cause, and this is Artist Talk. Have you ever gotten into any legal problems? Nothing that wasn't controllable. You know, there's that fine line between um, creativity and just mania. I think if I wasn't a writer, I would be a neurotic, strange person that people would want to stay away from. It's like harnessing your OCD. Harnessing my OCD. <laughs> That's a genius. Hey, I'm Joy Bryant, and I am a board sport enthusiast. I like to shred. And on my new show, Across the Board, I'm going to be shredding with the best of them. I want to shred, yeah. Yeah, I want to shred. Yeah, well, let's do it. My favorite friends, celebrities, athletes, artists. We're going to snowboard. We're going to surf. We're going to skateboard. We're going to have a great time. <laughs> well, we both, you know, we both came over, you know, went over some hurdles. A yeah. little obstacle say. Yeah. You break through shyness and uh -huh. me. Break it through that snowboard. What? Tom, how's it going, Good, dude? How you doing? Good to see you, man. I don't know if you're gonna make it or not. No, I mean, 5 a.m. is tough. Okay, what do we got right there? Shark, I see him right there. Oh, oh. all right, there, come on. This is, is the frisky one here. Yeah, be careful. Man. Yeah, you have a reputation of pissing people off. Like, your blog pisses people off. It, uh, it pisses people off. I, uh, this face pisses people <laughs> off, you know? But, uh, yeah, it, it, sometimes, sometimes I get along. Did your dad, you know, was he on um, you constantly telling you how to do it since he was in the business? My dad was such a dick, because he'll always tell me I suck, and then when he's in front of other people, like, that's my son. That's my son. He's real good. Jim. Only on YouTube.